So this is a review of the Steve Koo 40DD. Um, it is a very small, as you can see, comparing it to the size of a uh, AA battery. Um, it's a very small, tiny, 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 tiny flashlight. Um, it runs a uh, XPG emitter and it's produced uh, in small batches by a guy named Steve Koo. This is a, uh, a stainless steel version. It has a matte finish. Um, it runs on a 10-180 battery. It's a very small rechargeable battery. Um, this one has a quantum tunneling composite QTC pill, so it gives a variable output. And you can see here, it gets a little, and it gets really bright. Um, mine is a high Cree version, so that the coloring, color rendering is much better than a regular uh, LED. Um, but that does limit the lumens output. So the lumens output in this is about 80, uh, 80 lumens. On low, which could be really low, like look at that. Just, just nothing at all, barely anything at all. Um, it'll run on uh, low for just about forever. On high, it'll probably run something like 20 minutes. But um, it gets pretty hot, so I wouldn't run it on high for 20 minutes. Um, in my reviews, I always give them, uh, I always look at flashlights using 10 different attributes, and then I give them a score of zero to two in those 10 attributes. The uh, two represents it has excellent performance. The zero represents that it has um, really failed in doing what it's supposed to do in that given attribute, and then a one is run of the mill. So 10 attributes times 20 points, or times two points each is uh, 20 points total. The so score is out of, uh, it's, you know, 10 out of 20, 20 out of 20, whatever. Um, so the first thing that I looked at in this case um, is design. And that is sort of a, what does it look like on paper? What does the flashlight look like from, you know, like the CAD drawings? And here, you know, this is designed to be a keychain uh, flashlight or a flashlight you wear around your neck. <clears throat> and as a result, it's really small um, to the extent that it does operate as a keychain flashlight, you can see that it's really small. I mean, here is the, uh, the Mushan Aeon, one of my favorite flashlights. And it just, it, it, it makes this thing look even tinier. And this isn't a big flashlight to begin with, but this thing is just even smaller than that. Um, so if you want a flashlight that you can just put in your pocket and completely forget about, or throw on your neck, or put in your top pocket and completely forget about, this is it. I mean, it just doesn't get... I mean, I'm sure they can make them smaller, but practically speaking, if it gets smaller, it's almost impossible to use. So, you know, trying to find that <clears throat> easy to carry, always with you flashlight, this is it. So design uh, with a goal of making a flashlight that's always with you, I give it a two out of two. The next category I look at is fit and finish. That is, how is it implemented? How does it look in reality? Um, the flashlight has very, very smooth threads, which is good because the threads help um, help it make it a, an infinite variable brightness flashlight. By having smooth threads, it comes into contact with the, uh, the quantum telling composite in a much more regular and consistent way. And as you can see there, I mean, it's pretty smooth. It's not as finicky as the first generation quantum tunneling composite flashlights were, the Peaks and the uh, 38DD, which was the uh, predecessor to this model. And Steve got it, the thread's really smooth, and as a result, the, the, the ramping on the brightness is pretty smooth. Um, the LED is as centered as it can be. I mean, it may not be perfectly centered, but I can't tell the difference. Everything is nice and well cut. Um, I've heard people had a problem putting the uh, lanyard, um, the keychain lanyard in there, but I don't carry money on a keychain, so I wouldn't know. Uh, lanyard, ho lanyard holes are always a problem on flashlights. There's just no real easy way to do it, except for this one. I really like that one. Um, the tritium inserts were really nice. I got ice blue tritium inserts, so it glows blue in the dark. It's always glowing, you just only can see it in the dark. Um, the little flat facets are nice and give you a little bit of pinch point. Um, everything in this flashlight just came came out really well. He did a good job putting it together. Um, it took him a little longer than it was supposed to, but I'd rather have something look great and be great uh, than and be late than arrive on time and be crappy. Um, so, you know, I don't know what more he could have done to make this flashlight nice. I mean, it has the tritium inserts, it has the... Uh, 
high Cree emitter, it has infinite variable brightness. Um, the, the finish is a matte finish, and as you can see as I'm spinning it around here, um, it's the matte finish picks up scratches quite easily. But I actually like the way that looks. I, I think that it looks especially cool, kind of like a, a worn you know, piece of gear or equipment. It's not that old. I mean, I got this in January, so the scratches are pretty pronounced. But I don't really care. I mean, I, I, I bought this to use it, and I don't care if it looks a little dinged up. But uh, no dents on it, so I'm fine with that. Um, the next category, so in the fit and finish, I gave it a 2 out of 2. The next category is grip. How do you use it? How do you hold it? And here, you know, you made a trade-off. If you want to light this small, you want to have a light with you all the time, you're going to have to give something up. And the thing that you give up is you give up grip. I mean, here in the, the, the Aeon, you have a hard time grabbing a hold of it because it's so small. And in this light, it's even smaller. It's, it's you know, you can still pinch hold it. You can still grip it like this, which is usually the way I grip it. But, you know, this is not a light that you can you got to be careful with it. You got to, you know, it's used for detail work. You got to be really careful with it. Um, but it's a trade off I was willing to make to get a light this small. So, in terms of grip, there's no choice. It's a zero. This is not a light you can, uh, that'll stick to your hand like other lights. It's just way, way, way too small. There's no knurling. There's no um, checking on it. So, I mean, you get, you, you, you see what you get, and that's it. There's nothing else. It's a tiny little light. Um, in terms of carry, again, you know, this is designed as a light you can throw in your pocket, and for that purpose, it's fantastic. I throw it in my top pocket in, you know, dressy clothes, you can't even tell it's there. You can put it in your jeans pocket, uh, the coin pocket in your jeans, and never know it's there. Um, actually, you have to be careful not to let it go through the washer. I don't think it would kill it, but I don't want it to go through the washer or lose it, so it's really, really tiny. But you can put it just about anywhere and no one will notice you have it. In terms of output, for a light this size, I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, 80 lumens on this guy, 114 lumens on this guy. Um, they're both pretty darn bright. And given the size, I, I really, really like the output. The infinite variable brightness on this is probably the nicest I've seen. Really simple. Twist to turn on, twist more to get brighter. Um, it just works really well. I really, really like it. So, in terms of output, I gave it a 2 out of 2. Um, in terms of carry, I gave it a 2 out of 2 as well. Runtime, the runtime on this light, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I've recharged it like three times since I got it. Um, I had to buy a special charger, the cotton picker, um, USB charger that I got on CPF. Um, and it, it runs fine. I mean, the runtime is more than enough for what you need. I mean, most of the time you can get away with like half brightness, which is like that. Um, or you can get away with just a little bit of brightness, like a moonlight brightness, if you want to. Um, I've, you can tell it, it is not regulated, so it will dim on you, and you can tell when it's time to recharge it. Um, the charge takes about an hour, and it, it lasts, you know, in normal use about three to four weeks. So out of runtime, I gave it a two out of two. Um, the beam type here uh, is because of the fact that it is a uh, such a tiny light. It's all flood. But for what you're going to use this light for, you're, you're not going to be lighting up trees a long time, uh, far away. So for what you're going to use it for, it's fine. Um, I gave it a 2 out of 2 in beam type. The, the thing that really impressed me about the light, more so than, than its size and its brightness, was just how rich and, and colorful the high Cree output is. It makes a difference. I mean, the light looks... It, it looks different. You you can tell even without you know running them both at the same time. You can see the difference. I mean, here's the difference. And there's the there's the. I mean, just one of them makes your skin look like skin. The other one makes you look like a ghost. And it does that with everything. Uh, every single thing that you light up with the the Cree emitter just looks different. It looks. Um, more realistic. It looks more uh, more like what you'd see in sunlight. And as a result, um, this is probably one of the, the highest quality beams I've ever seen. I'd give it a 2 out of 2 there. Um, the, U, the UI, the user interface, is uh, very simple and straightforward. It's the same user interface as on the uh, Surefire Titan, although they use a potentiometer instead of uh, quantum tunneling composite. Um, but turn it on. Uh, to turn it on, you twist it. To make it brighter, you twist it more. And you can control how bright you want it to be. Um, I gave it a 2 out of 2 in user interface. Uh, in terms of hand f hands free use, it doesn't really lay flat. And it'll roll a little bit, and the, the, the divots, the, the flats, will give it a little bit of a, 
a slower roll, but it, it is not a light that you can just let it go and uh, leave it on a spot. It'll roll away from you. But it does hand, uh, tail stand quite well and it makes a, a pretty decent candle when you fire it up all the way. As a result, I give it a 1 out of 2 in terms of hands-free. The total score is a 17 out of 20. This is a really great light. It's a very, very good light um, to carry with you every day. It's a fun light to play with. It looks great. Um, it has a lot of really super high-tech innovative features. You know, the super small cell, uh, the quantum tunneling composite, the tritium inserts, the high Cree emitter. I mean, this guy is just absolutely feature-packed for the light, uh, for the size. And uh, when I bought it new from Steve, it was like 80 bucks plus shipping from Hong Kong. It's a great deal. I know that they're going for significantly more online now, but if you could get one for, you know, 150 bucks is probably still worth it. I mean, if you're buying a light this small, you're probably a flashlight aficionado anyway. So that doesn't really stun you in terms of price. The one thing I will say is that this is not a beginner's light. It has a rechargeable battery. The battery is really tiny. You probably have to buy a specialized battery charger to run it. And as a result, the, the barrier to entry is really high. It's not something that you can just buy at a store, buy a battery, and then be on your way. I mean, as as you know, much of a niche light as this guy is because it uses a, a CR2 battery. At least these batteries are available in stores near your house. This one takes a, the, the 10180 battery, which I've never seen in a store. It's rechargeable. The recharger is a specialized charger. So when you buy this, keep that in mind. I mean, this is a great little gee whiz piece of technology, but it's not the easiest light in the world to own or use because of all of those special requirements. But if you have all those things, if you invest all the money and the time into making everything work right, this is a fantastic little light. Everyday Commentary, see you later.